Yeah, none of it went into the grass at all. <laughs> What's up guys we are back and we are working on the LTR 450 hopefully we're the last times for a little bit um, we got a brand new TPS sensor in and I already got it plugged in and thankfully that was our problem but now I'm gonna show you real quick on how it actually works um, so you guys know you can troubleshoot if you have a bad TPS sensor or you know or what's going on we already got it installed and I guess one thing I never even really showed you guys what I was doing was they do make a harness to plug into this to test your TPS sensor but I just shaved a little bit into the wire there and I'll probably use maybe a little liquid tape or I'll just wrap it up but pretty much right you got here is your basic uh, you know voltmeter and we were setting it on <clears throat> I'm sorry uh, DC here um, and just on 20 volts and I'll show you now when we hook it up all right so I got them on the wires and actually before I tighten this up it was at 0 .60 so I'll probably try just bumping it a smudge but it is running good at it. I already turned it on um, and if you were to uh, hit the throttle it will jump up a decent amount. I could try to do that for you guys but it will be difficult. There you go. Uh, see, it went back to, so it's, it's real close. So, and actually I had a little bit off earlier and my red light came on, uh, whatever you wanna call it, your check engine light or your, your fuel injection, you know, system light, whatever. <clears throat> but anyways, um, that'd come on. So when we actually set it, you know, true where it's supposed to be at, it, uh, it was good. So, pretty much all I gotta do now, I guess I can show you real quick. So. But besides that, um, we just gotta button this thing back up. And this thing definitely needs a new chain. And well, I should do a sprocket, but actually that sprocket doesn't even look bad, but <sighs> definitely a chain. I know I could probably uh, get away with oiling it up and maybe I'll uh, just do it right now, oil it up for the, the winter time here. Cause if we get some snow, we're probably gonna mess around. So no sense in dragging a brand new chain through, you know, snow and sitting wet, so. Yeah, I might think about that actually. But everything else, I mean, uh, it rolls good. Um, right now we are running some 110 in it. Um, but we'll probably just end up back to 93. Um, I do have that cherry bomb still. I am going to plug that back in, remove the air box, and it still runs good. That's how we're going to leave it. If for some reason that cherry bomb's bad, we're just going to probably leave it how it sits now um we have uh we have other quads that we have our you know performance stuff done too so my goal will kind of with this was just to kind of leave it stock so we even went with the you know back to the stock pipe we had this yoshimiri over there and it was just clapped out um so yeah we're gonna get this thing back together we're gonna clean it up 
And yeah. So actually one of the other things too we gotta do is we do have a new set of rims and tires in the back to bring up and we're gonna put on this thing cause these ones are just roached. Um, it will probably be in one of my other videos cause I'm hoping uh, to smoke the rest of these tires off for you guys. So we get a little bit decent weather here and some uh, time. I will gladly do that for you guys because those tires are pretty much, that one actually, I mean, they're junk. That's, that's the better one. That, these ones are pretty, pretty flat. So we'll be done with those. And actually it wasn't this rim. It was the other rim I thought. Yeah, see, this one's actually been hit pretty good with the rock and all that. Probably when we were down in Haspen. And yeah, so I wouldn't trust that tire. I mean, it, it'd probably be fine, but the other rims we got are actually in good shape and all that. So we're gonna stick with that. All right, so pretty much to wrap this video up, uh, I'm gonna do a quick, you know, what we did. So pretty much you have your swir swirl filter that's in here, um, underneath whatever, we just, took the fuel or the swirl filter out that's all we did we left the hole there you know whatever you want to call it it's still in there as far as the you know the container of it but we just took the filter out uh we're not gonna be spending fifty dollars a filter you know some people say every six months and all that uh no thank you so we deleted that and then we just ran our hose like it's supposed to got a little fuel shut off there and then we just put one of these little easy uh, fuel filters in there from our local uh, store. And that'll just be an easy thing. You know, I could swap it out like every oil change. This quad's probably not going to get ran that much. But I tell you one thing we will be doing is putting seafoam in that gas tank to make sure that our fuel pump and our injector stay in good shape because I priced those when I was at our uh, parts store and they are not <clears throat> cheap at all. So we wanna keep these in good shape. We'd actually, we cleaned out, there's a filter inside here too and we cleaned that out. And then there's also a little filter in your injector too, which we'd already taken that part and cleaned that too. So we cleaned the injector, we cleaned the pump, we deleted the filter, swirl filter. We put a new filter in here. Um, we'd already cleaned the, the filter in the box here, but I'm pretty sure we are gonna go. Yeah, see, it's not that great actually. I'm still not happy with that. Uh, I'd like to put just a foam filter in and that'd be good with that. And then obviously, you know, we put a new TPS sensor in, and a new fuel regulator. So, with a little love, this thing should uh, be good to us. I know the motor doesn't have a lot of hours on it. I actually know the guy that we bought this from, and uh, should be a good quad. He had bought it, I think it was only like a year or two old, and actually he machined all these skid plates, which is kind of cool. He actually did a really good job on them. And he actually, you know, he made the clamps and everything. And then we had our guy uh, powder coat them. But he made a skid plate here. And then he made these nice, uh, for you, like your boots don't rub the, the frame and all that. So it's kept it actually in pretty good shape. So, oh, I forgot that we bought the exhaust collar here too, or gasket. So we've already done some stuff to this thing and we still got you know, sprocket and chain and, you know, a couple of knickknacks and, but all that, she's going to be ready to go. And as far as how the truck's going right now, if you've watched the previous video, we have our old PCM now and we are going to be shipping this tomorrow back to them so we don't get hit with a core charge. And then 
maybe tomorrow night or tomorrow during the day. We got our uh, tuner in, our i3 Diablo. We got to get the updated. And we're going to try to run the truck a couple more times. And then we'll probably just fill up this. I got to get the one ton out of there. And I'll just try to hopefully fill up that whole tank in the quad. And then we'll fill that up with some 93 because we got some crappy weather happening this weekend. So I prefer just to keep the truck clean. So we'll just make a couple runs. Well, I'll get another gas can. We'll get about 10 gallons of 93, and that should be enough to get our new tunes in. And then we just got to run it a little bit. And then we will be able to do our Hemi Fever stuff, which should be fun. So. All right, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. I know they're not exciting if you don't own an LTR 450 with fuel injection problems. But, uh, you know, this is kind of the time and it's before spring hits that we start working on our stuff and making sure everything's dialed in. We will have some more fun projects definitely coming in the garage here shortly. Um, I still got to post, you know, we already did some work, you know, as far as pulling that motor out. And actually, show you guys here. It's got um, parts in for the motor because he did find uh, a good camshaft setup that we're going to go with for this thing. Um, I know he is kind of looking at some roller rockers right now for it. Um, we don't know what the stud setup is though, so we might, we gotta see what's going on with that. Um, actually, we're gonna take the intake off this 304. It's a Offenhauser, it's kind of an old school, let me see, oh there we go. And that's an Offenhauser, which is actually, it's a really good old school brand for these AMCs. and. Everything's so much more expensive for these AMCs than it is for just like a your nice Chevy 350. It's usually why you do the conversion. But, you know, that's not what the guy wanted to do. He wanted to keep it a little bit more closer to original. And, uh, you know, this is definitely easier. So we're going to take that and take off, sandblast it, probably paint it. And we're going to put it on that. And that'll be... Almost as good as still a performer, like an Elbrock performer. But the problem is, those things are 400 bucks for for one of those. And what I'm reading, the performance is not that different. So, and he's not, it's not like he's on the drag strip right now, trying to shave off a tenth of a second or something like that. You know, we're beating him through the woods and all that and going up sand hills. So, that being said, um... We're gonna start that. Hopefully, we'll see how the weather depends, but we're gonna supposed to get an engine stand in here on Saturday. And we're gonna get the trans off, get the engine on the stand and all that. And just kind of scope things out and get things mocked so we're ready to start digging into the engine. And then next weekend after that, we are going to uh, work on and actually put the new cam in and all that stuff, which I like to show you guys and all that. Um, should be a nice little fun process. Uh, you know, it, it, it's easy. I mean, as far as we're just, it's not a, it's not a heavy build or anything like that. So it's pretty much anyone could probably do it. So yeah, we're going to get this, uh, get this, uh, going here. And, uh, we got still the JK we got to work on. Um, well, obviously we got to get that motor and AMC in there. Um, Suzuki will be wrapped up. That's not going to be no issue. Um, we have the tuning in the truck. which that's a, That'll be another easy one. And we do have a KLX 140 that I need to kind of go over. Uh, I'll explain that story to you when we pull it in. And then we have a CR 125 that we blew up last year that we got to redo that motor. We got to see figure out what's going on with that so we also have that going on um and we got actually a few other projects oh i told you guys i was gonna do a hood stack on the yj it's just a little four-cylinder jeep that we beat through the woods and have fun it's actually been working out pretty good as my daily right now since my other daily crapped out and i refused to 
drive the truck. But, so we actually got the hood stack I want to do in that. And then I did say, and I am looking forward to it, for when we go and get the CJ in March, the bring it back, I want to put a bottle on it, and I want 411 or 456 gears in this thing, and it should rip pretty good. So I'm looking forward to doing all these projects with you guys. Please hit the subscribe and the like. Comment. Tell me what you like or don't like. I could take it. Trust me. So thanks for watching, guys. See you soon.